So welcome everyone again. I'm Jennifer Ding, and I'm here today with Marco Berlow to present CityMap. CityMap is an urban data collection and mapping tool. It is an open source React template for creating a web app to collect data and visualize it on a map. Users can use CityMap to collect timestamped geolocation data of their entrance while moving around a city. And we have a, we have a link to our GitHub repo below. So in 2020, version 1.0 of CityMap was inspired by a very specific question. What's mask wearing like around my city? The LA Times and the New York Times both investigated this, sending their reporters to count mask behavior on street corners. And for us, this question was largely inspired by experiences that we had where we observed how different mask wearing could be, borough to borough, street to street, store to store. And in addition to the spatial difference in behavior, mask wearing also seemed to be influenced by temporal factors like day of week or time of day. So to investigate this further, we built MaskMap. The app has three emojis that re represent three different mask states, masked, half masked, and no mask. And when you observe a behavior, you click on the respective emoji, which logs a count and places that emoji on the map. Over a year of data collection, we saw many different mask wearing patterns in different neighborhoods from on the very left, the Dumbo waterfront on a November 2020 weekend to in the middle, Brooklyn Heights on a 2021 weekday evening, I think February. And then on the very right, we have Second Avenue in summer 2021, right before the rise of the Delta variant. It's been an interesting experience collecting and sharing this data in New York over the pandemic. And in a way, it's felt like a proxy for public sentiment about COVID over time. So this year, Marco and I began to wonder, what else might people want to map around their city? And how can we adapt mast map to support other citizen science mapping projects? For example, other public health concerns such as trash piles or poop, like the infamous San Francisco poop map that may have been an inspiration for mask map. There's also more time sensitive data like the locations of cherry blossoms in bloom. Marco and I think a few other people here lived on Roosevelt Island one year and during the cherry blossom festival, it was a mad rush to the island every time. So we built city map so that more people can build their own data maps. We wanted city map to be open source so that anyone can contribute and collaborate with the project. And what we did is we took the core of mask map and adapted it so that people can build any kind of map based data collection. So like mask map, it's a react web app that features icons at the top of the interface above a map. Users can customize the objects and behaviors they would like to track, including the number of things, though currently our code only supports one to four objects, but we're hoping to add the ability to, to change that number soon. So while moving around a city, users can click the icons and the data will be logged and mapped. And after a session, a user can download the data as a CSV using that button at the very bottom. And like the icebreaker earlier, thank you guys all for sharing your ideas. We posed this question in GitHub and got some really interesting responses, such as how busy playgrounds are, street lighting, green area, COVID, mobile testing centers, street art, and inspired by these ideas, we built a few prototype examples from the city map template. We have street lighting map at the very left, and it's actually live at that URL right below the interface, which should be a great way to map different levels of street lighting around cities and hopefully can be used to map safer routes to walk at night. We also have trash map and sound map. So for your quiet and loud spaces in your city and we also created an example of street art map, focusing on music, performers, and visual art. And I think this may be our demo during the coding part of this workshop. And as we'll share in that part of the workshop, the process to create your own city map is pretty straightforward. The code base itself contains the basic features you need to create a React app, visualize data on a map with Leaflet, add custom icons, log data with a simple click on one of those icons, and finally download the data CSV. And from this core city map foundation, people can adapt, remix, and build on top of the template. So in the later session, we'll go over the basic steps needed to create a city map and then also show you how to connect it um, to Google, how to use Google Firebase to host the app and connect it to a database. 
And after the app is live, you can share it with other people to collect data and maybe build your own New York open data set if that is of interest. Thank you guys all for joining us today. We'll transition shortly to the coding part of the workshop. But before we do, I just want to see, are there any questions or comments that people have about CityMap in general? There are some things in the chat. Yeah, overflowing trash bins, agree, Cameron, is, yeah, would be a great data point to track. It's very time sensitive too. And Mark is asking, is there a binary install? Marco, I'm going to let you take this one. Not yet. We'll see how we install that soon, but we, it's not just a simple binary install for it. It's a little more complicated, but not that much. I think we're good. On to you, Marco. Okay. Hey everyone. My name is Marco. And today we're going to see how we can actually download CD map, how we can customize it and how we can deploy it to the cloud so that everyone can access your own map. So I think the starting point is our GitHub page, which we shared before, but I'm going to send it again on the Zoom chat so that people can take a look. And what we're going to do today is written in all in the whole installation guide here. So if someone's interested and want to do it along with me, that would be great. But also if maybe you're not too familiar with these tools and it, you need some more time, you can also do that offline another day. And if you have any issues, of course, you can reach out to us and let us know. But as I said, this is the starting point. And the first thing that we want to do is that we want to download CD map and we want to have that on our laptop. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with Git and GitHub, but there's two ways to do that. One is simple through the UI. You can download it or otherwise, if you have the Git command line, you can copy this URL and now you're going to see my terminal. I believe most of the people are familiar with a terminal on CLI in this meeting. If you're not, I think it's, it's not going to be easy to make it suitable for everyone. So I'm going to try not to have too many technical details, but also not to take too many things for granted. But if you have any questions, please let me know. So here I am in just my development folder and what I'm going to run, I'm going to do a git clone of the URL that I copied before. And what this is doing is that it's pulling the repository from uh, the CD map on GitHub. And so now if I look at my folder, I have a CD map folder. And I'm going to get inside this CD map folder. To run this on our computer, we literally just need two commands. The first one is called yarn install. So you need to have yarn installed on your computer. And depending on whether you have Mac, I'm currently running this on a Mac, you do it in different ways. For example, I generally install things on my MacBook using Brew, which is a package manager for Mac OS. But there's tons of different ways to install it. So you can just Google based on your Linux distribution or operating system and get it. But I assume some people will already have that installed. And if that's the case, what we can do is just simply do a yarn install. And what this is doing is that it's downloading all the dependencies and the, the libraries that we use for CD map, like the Leafly, which is a library to build a map. And at this point, the dependencies have been downloaded. So by running yarn start, we are able to start a React server, which is the framework that we're using to build this app. And generally, automatically, your default browser should be open at this address. If it doesn't, you can just type local colon 3000, which means that you're using the port 3000 on your computer. Okay. So in order to use CDMAP, you need to allow your browser to get your location. So I currently have that, which is allowed for this web, but if your browser doesn't have that by default, you might have to go into the setting and enable that. And the settings change. I'm using Chrome, but for Firefox, Safari, they're different, but there you go. You can see you have CD map running on your computer and it was fairly easy to get that. We have the three buttons that Jennifer was showing previously. And if you click on them, it takes a little bit because the first time that the browser is fetching the location, sometimes it's a bit slow, but you see now. I have a, a count that is increasing and this is my location right now. I live in New York. It's showing the icon on the map. Now they're all stacking on each other because I'm not moving. The idea is that I was walking in the city and I should see the trace of the icons all, all over the city. So that's why we only see one now. And then another functionality that we have, as Jennifer mentioned before, is we have a download CSV. So let's say that I get a bunch of data, it's a little slow now, but there you go. I added more data and then I click download CSV and I open it. Now, I'm using numbers because I'm on my Mac, but you can open this with Excel, with a text editor or other open source tools for 
CSV files. And as you can see, I logged five data points and we see them here. On the left column, the timestamp is the time which I collected the data. The icon status is the number of the icon that I use. So for example, the first icon on the left, the N is the number zero. So icon status zero. Then the, the Y is going to be icon status one and the C is going to be icon status two. And then we have the latitude and the longitude for each of the data that we collected. And we have the accuracy, which is something that the browser gives us. And it's how accurate the browser thinks he was at getting our location. So this is great. This, we can get data, you can parse this data, but the problem with this is that it's not accessible through the internet. So that means that I have this app, I need to go out and collect the data, but I can't, so I need to deploy this. And also I want to build something specific. Like in this case, this is a city map. It's not really telling me anything. I want to build in this case, a street art. So I want to be able to go and take a walk in New York city and track all the artists that I see. And I want to differentiate them among musicians or street art performers and painters. And potentially I want to give this app to other people living in New York. And I want to allow them to collect the data so that we can build a cool map of New York city and where the higher density of musicians and painters is. So in order to do that, we need to do very few changes in the code of CD map. And to do it, we're going to open the app in a code editor. So I'm using Atom, which is the one that I like the most, but you can use any other code editor. It can be Sublime, it can be Visual Studio, and you just open the CD map in the editor, and I'm going to show you what we need to change. So don't worry if you are not a programmer or you haven't really spent time coding, it's going to be extremely simple. And it's going to be a good experience to you know, start for the first time to do some coding. So the file we want to look at, it's called app.js and it's inside the CD map folder in the source folder. So first thing that we want to do is that we want to change the title of the app from CD map. We want to call it street art locator. So we just need to scroll at the bottom. Sorry, I did this too fast. We just want to scroll at the bottom. And if you have the line numbers, you should go to line 130. And you'll see here, it says CD map. And so we want to change the title. So we can just delete this and call it street art. Okay. Now I'm going to save the file and look at that because of yarn and react, this is responsive. So we just make a change and we see it reflected to our logo app that is running. It's great. Second thing that we want is that we want some icons here to uh, differentiate between musicians, painters. And so luckily I have them on my local, I'm just going here. So I created them using a tool called Canva. So I created a saxophone, there is a dancer, and there is a painter. You can use Photoshop. You can download that from the web and just get creative on how you want to get your icons. And so what we want to do is that once you have your icons, you go in the CD map, let me actually do this, this might be easier. We'll go in the CD map folder. We go into the source folder and there is a folder called images. And we just need to paste the three images here. So the only thing that we need to do is really call these three images, the new one that we created the same way as the existing one. We can delete this one. Now the app behind is going to complain because it can't find the images with the right name. And we're just going to call icon one, the one that we want to see the first one on the left and the middle one needs to be called icon two and the third one, which was the C of New York C. Here the icon three. All right. So you see, you just need to do that. And this looks a lot more like street art locator and it was very easy to customize and you can do it. So you can do that with any map that you would like to create. Okay. So now we have this that is running on our laptop, but what I really want is I want to have a public URL and be able to go outside, connect it with my phone and collect the data. I'm not going to bring my laptop around. And so to do that, there is a lot of different ways of deploying it. If you have experience with AWS or other cloud providers, feel free to do that. What we suggest to do, especially for now is to use Firebase, which is a Google service. It's very simple and it's free. It just requires you to have a Google account. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and deploy this on the internet using Firebase. So in order to do that, you need to go to the Firebase console. So. If you go on Google, you type Firebase, I think I can also share this link. We're just going to ask you to, okay, Jennifer already shared it. So you can go there. You're just going to connect with your Google account and you should see this theme. If you already had projects on Firebase, as I assume that some of you have, you'll see them here. If not, this is going to be empty. Also, let me remind you that if this is going too fast, or maybe you're not familiar with the steps, everything is written on this GitHub 
guide so you can do this later. You can just take a look now to get more familiar and you can do this at another time too. So once you're here, you want to create a new project. And in this case, I'm going to call my project three part locator. I'm going to go ahead. Now it's asking me if I want to use Google Analytics for this project. This is a little more advanced. We don't want to set this up for now. We're just going to take, make things simple. And now Firebase is provisioning a, a service for us where we're going to able to run our app then for free. This might take a little bit, but to not take longer than 30 seconds. So we'll just wait. Also, if you have questions, yeah, I see people have questions. Thank you, Jennifer, for answering them. Perfect. Okay. So now we have our project and this is the homepage for the project. We have three choices. We can build an iOS app, an Android app, or a web app. So for CDMAP, we want to do a web app because we want to just make it simple and allow everyone to access it, no matter what phone they have, what operating system they have, as long as they have an internet connection, they'll be able to connect to it. So I decided to name for my web app. I'm just going to call it the art cater. And it's very important to select this, um, checkbox because this is going to allow us to have a public URL on the internet for our app. And we go ahead and we register our app. Now Firebase is creating a public URL for it. That's going to be accessible by people. And now Firebase is telling us that we need to run, uh, NPM install Firebase. So this is to add the Firebase library to our app. Now going back to the terminal, we're going to kill the process that is, that was running our app locally. You can do that with Ctrl C or you can open a new session. We don't want to run NPM install because we're using Yarn as a package manager. You can use both, but sometimes key things can get a little messy. So let's just stick with one. So instead of doing yard npm install Firebase, we want to do yard add Firebase. So what this is doing is that it's adding to our app all the packages to run on Firebase. It's downloading them from the web. It should not take that long, uh, depending on your internet connection. So perfect. So as you can see, all these dependencies have now been added. Great. And then if we go back to the Firebase UI, we also see that Firebase is telling us to add this to our code. Now we don't need all of that because we already did that for CDMAP. The only thing we need is to copy this line, this, these lines. So everything that is inside the Firebase config variable. So we go ahead and we copy this. This is also something that this is important because it's what's allowing you to connect to your Firebase services. So we copied this and we go inside our code editor. And if you go in the CDMAP folder, source folder, you'll see that we have a config.js file that has a very similar code snippet, but just with empty values. So this is to show you that's the place where you need to put what you just copied. So we just go ahead and we paste it here. Very important that we keep the export. So this has to be at the beginning. We need to be exporting this variable. Now we go ahead and save. So then we click next on the Firebase UI. And now it's telling us to install the Firebase tools. So this is a command line for Firebase. I already have that on my laptop. I installed it using brew because I tried to install everything using brew on Mac. You can use this command. On our guide, we also have a link on how to install this. So based on your operating system, you can just, and the versions, you can just choose the best way for you to install it. And so back on the terminal, if you're able to then install it, you should be able to type Firebase. And this is actually going to return you all the options that you can have in order to interact with Firebase. Cool. First thing that we need to do is Firebase login. This command is going to allow you to connect to your Google account that already has the Firebase project where we created the project. So if you have never done this before, this is probably going to open a window in your browser and you'll have to put your password to connect to your Google account. Once you have that, what we need to do is to do Firebase in it. This is going to start creating a deployment and it's just going to ask you a bunch of questions. The first one is what type of deployment do we want to have? Is it a database, a Firestore, a function? What we want to select is the fourth option, which is a hosting. And the way you do that is that you press the space bar and press enter here. And then it's going to ask us whether we want to use an existing project or create a new one. In this case, we want to use an existing project because we already created Street Art Locator on the browser. And so Firebase is going to show you a list of your projects. Maybe you have several. If it's the first one, you probably only have one, but you want to select the one that you created. In this case, the street article here. So ask us whatever we want to use the public directory and we don't. 
In our case, we want to use the field direction. So we're just going to write build here. And configure is a single page app. Yes. So you can do it type yes or just a Y. Set up automatic builds and deploys with GitHub. This is a little too complicated for now. So we don't need to do it. We're just going to put now. Okay. So everything is configured. The very last thing we need to do is to push this to the cloud. So before doing that, though, we need to run Yarn Guild. So everything that you have a development app on your laptop, you want to be able to create an executable that is ready to be run somewhere in production. And it needs to be optimized for that. So what Yarn Guild does is that it creates an optimized way for your app to be run. And you'll always have to run this before you deploy. And then you just type Firebase deploy. And what this is doing is that it's creating what Yarn Build created, just getting that, and it's going to push that to the cloud. So if everything goes well, we should be able soon to access our street art locator on the internet. So everything seems to have worked. And Firebase is giving us two links now. The first one is to access our project through the console of Firebase, what we were looking at before. But what's important is that it's giving us a URL that is our public URL where the street art locator is. So if I copy that on Google, boom, I should be able to see the street art locator. So I'm going to, and what's cool is that unlike the local host we had before, this is a website that is accessible by everyone in the world. So I'm going to put this in the Zoom chat and you guys should all be able to see this, hopefully the night. And we also need to give access to the geolocation. So let me just refresh and accept. Okay. So I should be able with a little bit of delay to, yeah. Log data. So as you can see, I'm logging data here. And if you guys are opening that on your computer, or on your phone, you should be able to be logging data. So assume that now I go for a walk, I can open this page on my phone, take my walk, and then at the end, download the CSV and come back home and look at my data and potentially share with other people. This is all great, but th there's something that is missing, which is everyone will have their CSV, but how do we you know, centralize that. How do we make sure that we have a common access to data so that we can build a map with New York and all contribute to a single data set? There are a lot of ways to do that and you can build your own database, deploy it anywhere. But for this workshop, we decided to go with another Firebase service, which is called a real-time database because it's extremely simple to, to use. So as a last thing, we're going to do that. To do it, we need to go inside our code editor. And again, in app.js, which is inside CDMAP, inside the source folder. And we try to make things as easy as possible. So you just need to uncomment a bunch of lines. This is also described in the guide. The first one is at line 15. If you're not familiar with comments in JavaScript or more in general in coding, this is how you start a comment slash and a star. And this is how you end the comment. So star and a slash. So all you need to do is to delete the beginning and the end of the comment. You see also my text editor now gave colors to this because now this code will be run. It's no longer going to be just a comment to be right. Same for this line on line 26, you're going to delete the comments. And we do this one more time a little below on line 84 and line 86. So we want to be able to have firebase.database.rest push to be a real line of code. This should be it. As you can see, this is actually the line that's pushing things to the database. And so what we want to do, we just want to save this. Right. And then we go to our terminal. We want to deploy these changes. So as I told you before, what you want to do is to run yarn build is going to create our optimized build to be pushed to the cloud. So you always need to run this command before you want to change something on the internet. And once this is done, you want to run Firebase deploy. It's going to push things on Google. Very last thing. We go on our uh, Firebase UI, which is here. Okay, so we finished this. We already run these commands. So once you're in the home page of your project, you want to go on your left here and select real-time database. You wait a little bit and you show a button that pops up here and you click on create database. Now this is going to give you a list of places. Uh, we suggest you to use US Central one. It's just easier to configure for now. And then you can have database in lock mode or test mode. Test mode doesn't require you to create security groups, security rules, so easy to go. But if you're interested or a little more advanced, certainly go with the first one. But you need to do more uh, configuration. Then you enable it. And now Google is providing us with a database that we'll see here. You see there's no data, but if deployment 
has worked and it looks like that. And I go back to the URL and I refresh. It's always important to refresh. And you should be able now, if I click on these data points, we should be able to see data. So I encourage all of you to flow my database with all the data that you can. I think we can break it because we're not that many. It requires a lot more people. But what's cool about it is that everyone that has access to this URL will now be logging data inside this database. And so that means that if you give this to friends or you advertise this in your community, you can just come back to this database, look at the data. If you're interested in doing some data science, uh, you can just literally export this into a JSON format and write Python script, load it into a notebook, create visualizations and all of that. Yeah, more data coming. So yeah, that's it. That's how you get the database. And truly in like less than an hour, you build your own collection tool. You can deploy it to the internet. You can attach a database to it and you can share it with as many people as you want. Let me just conclude with the fact that this is all open source and we have the GitHub page here. We already had some people that contributed to it, which is great. We have some pull requests and we have issues open and we're very happy to hear more ideas. If people want to contribute or just you have questions, you're curious, this is a good point to start. And then if you have any other questions, you can add them to the Zoom chat or the HackMD folder. Oh, page of the one where we started with. And yeah, I think that was pretty much it for me. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Uh, Marco, there was one question that I was not really able to answer. And the question was, is Firebase similar to Glitch or Cardo? If you're familiar with those tools, Anna was able to provide some an answer about Cardo. It seems like it might be a little bit different. That's more of a map development platform. But do you are you familiar with Glitch by chance? I unfortunately don't know what it is. Uh, but I can tell you that Firebase is a sim, it's a very simple hosting service by Google. So it allows you to host different type of apps. Uh, if you're familiar with containers, you can also deploy containers there. It allows you to have a very easy way to set up a network. So as you've seen, we could access a URL at a bunch of different databases. It doesn't really do anything more complex than that, but it's very good at doing that simple, those simple things. So I don't know about the other two tools, unfortunately. Sorry, we weren't able to provide a really clear answer there, but we will definitely take a look at those tools after the session. I had a question. Hi. So you can only drop pins like where you currently are geolocated. So in that case, wouldn't it be good to have, have this app installed on a phone since you're going to be mobile? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we're all doing things on our computer right now. And the point is, yes, that it geolocates to where you are at the moment. And so what Marco has just showed is a way to host the app on Firebase. That way you can actually access the app at that same link through your phone. So if you just use that link that uh, Marco has dropped in the chat and you open it up in, on your phone and grant location access, you can actually use the app on your phone as you move around. Awesome. Yeah, and also one thing to expand on that, in terms of usability, it would be great to have this as a real app on your phone, like the ones with the icons that you click. But the problem is that building an open source project there is a lot harder because then you need to know different languages because Android and iOS are different or like some specific frameworks. And it's much harder to deploy, like deploying an app on uh, the Apple Store requires a lot of checks and security approvals. It's literally not as fast as just 10 commands that we run today. So it's a choice. It's easier to build, but it's not as easy to use. So that was the trade-off. That makes total sense. Oh, I see a question from Cameron in the chat. What ideas are at the top of your wish list if you had more time to add to the template? Oh, that, no, that's a great question. There's a lot of different features that um, we want to add for one, something I mentioned in my presentation was wanting to be able to allow people to customize the number of objects they want to collect because right now one to four is good, but there might be more complicated examples where it's not exactly one to four. Another thing is maybe adding some different data visualizations. So for mask map, for example, we had different heat maps showing how different kinds of mask wearing behavior changed spatially across all of New York. And so we think that if we can take all that aggregated data and visualize it and, and offer those visualization features, that could be another great feature to include. Marco, anything you add to that question of 
what was at the top of our wish list to add to the template? No, I think that was right. I would think the same, the visualization, the heat map for mass map, which if you want, you, you can show it. I think it's a very nice way to track uh, data over time and see density of whatever you're collecting over time. Can I just jump in? I have a question. Can Firebase or the, uh, or at the app layer, can it be configured to store the data locally? Cause here's the thing we're, I work for a number of nonprofits and uh, organizations, and we want to develop a characterization app for weight street furniture and in New York city. And we're trying to figure out a way to do it easily, but also to be able to do it. If someone's say out collecting data. They don't have to worry about having a mobile connection. They can just go around, uh, collect data and then later maybe upload it to a data set. Is that possible with the app or with Firebase? It, so I think that the interesting thing so in this case, people will be walking, but they don't have an internet connection, but do we have, can they get the location or would they manually have to put where they are? Yeah, they, that would be the thing. See, Arc, ArcGIS has an app called Survey123, where you can set up basically a, a survey form and you can enter in whatever information you want to be collecting. So yeah, it would be a case where people would have to add in probably the nearest address, collect it that way. And then what it does is it's, it automatically will store it or you can tell it to, and then later you can send it in. That's just curious if that's possible it, on that form. Yeah, it's, so that's not how it currently works, but it's not that different. If you're interested, we can also talk further on how to, you know, extend it. It's not that different, but it, there are things that change a little bit. And I think the hard thing is it's very hard to store things on your phone. If it's not a running application that you get on the Apple store or the play store for Android, cause you don't have permission to save stuff there for security purposes. So that right. is the most the biggest challenge. So now we can't do that at the moment with CD map. Right. Yeah. Well, even with mobile apps, it can get tricky with some geolocating, particularly in the city because of all the buildings and things getting in the way to do any kind of accurate positioning. <laughs> so you almost have to have a field for entering an address just to be, make sure you can collect that information at a later time. Yeah. So, makes sense. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Looks really great, by the way. Uh, definitely we're going to be playing around with it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so um, one non-coding question I had. I was wondering how this work relates to your day jobs or, or if it did relate. Thanks, Cameron. Yeah. So I guess the relation to my current day job, I used to work at a company that, sorry, this is not answering your direct question, but I used to work at a company that was really interested in collecting street level data. So I think maybe some of the motivation to have to, to do city map definitely comes from that because we face certain challenges by using a super high tech method of computer vision. So I guess city map is like a contrast to that, which is like a little bit lower tech. There's a digital tool, but at the end of the day, it's just like supposed to be an easy user interface for human input. But I think what it allows then is some more flexibility to, for people to decide what they want to collect. And because for a computer vision algorithm, it's trained for certain objects and it's, it can be hard to add new objects or complex behaviors such as like street art, right? How do you recognize that with an algorithm? So I think what I like about city map is it, it's more flexible in that way for people to focus on what they want. And sorry, I'm rambling now, but I'll just add one last point. I'm currently at an organization called the Alan Turing Institute in London. And my team is very focused on open science, open source, open infrastructure, digital tools for communities. I would say that now I think a lot of my inspiration is like how to develop city map in a way that it can fit the needs of very different groups. The use case that Mark mentioned, how can you build this tool that can be very flexible and adapt, adapt to different groups of people? I'll let Mark go now. Um, I think for me, it's a slightly different layer. I don't use that on my uh, daily job. I'm very interested in also through my job is how you can create a consistent open source community and how do you make people involved and how can you make sure you can build a product that is as flexible as possible and reusable as possible by a lot of people. And so I think what we're trying to get here is that, like, how do we build something that people can customize as much as possible? It's super simple for someone to start and help. And I was very surprised that we already got people that create a pull request. If you're not familiar, they're just a way to contribute to the code base. So they learn how to use it and they suggested changes. And I think that's something that's awesome. And through my job, I'm trying to learn how to do that. 
this is a good way to also try to put that into practice. Uh -huh. If you can figure that out, you will be a very rich man. Look at the way like uh, New York City 311 works. There are so many different channels that information is coming through. And, and I, I remember I, I saw a very interesting demo of uh, a group that was auditing corporations, communication platform platforms. And they discovered that this is a very large workforce, but they discovered ultimately that they had a list of apps that were approved by the corporation for use internally. But when they did the audit, they found out there were over a thousand apps people were using to communicate with each other. So it can get very gnarly, but it's things work in software. People find a way it's, they will find a way to use whatever is most convenient for their applications. So yeah. So I, I feel your pain. It's, it's always a tricky business trying to figure out the best way to, to get to where you want to go and then bring other people along. It's not easy. A hundred percent. Yes. We are super early stages right now though. So we're really thankful for you guys all uh, for coming out, providing comments. And I'm not sure, you know, how much of the coding was happening <laughs> in the background. It was super fast, but this will be recorded. So if you guys want to set it up another time, you can watch the recording or we have um, everything documented on our GitHub repo as well. I just wanted to say in the hack and D, I've also added Marco and I's email. So if you guys have any other further questions, feel free to reach out to us or comment through our GitHub repo. Happy to engage and see how we can make this code base as useful for as many people um, as possible in New York City and beyond. And before we end, I know we're still a few minutes out, but it's Sunday, so I'm sure everyone would like a little more time back. Any final comments or questions before we close? I'm curious to hear more about how is the process of getting people to find out about MaskMap or related projects coming from this template? Yeah, it's it has been a bit of a challenge, especially for MaskMap. I think it's interesting to a certain kind of person, maybe not as like generally interesting as something like street art or poop. So... I mean, through channels like Beta NYC, Over Data Week for sure, and in organizations like that, I think we've been able to get the word out. And through some of our own networks and mask map, we ended up collecting over 20,000 data points of mask behavior across New York City, which is really great. I think for some of these other projects that might have more mass appeal, especially if they can be open New York data sets that might be able to feed back into the whole New York Open Data Week ecosystem. I think definitely open to input for how to get the word out there. Like I said, super new for both of us. So haven't really thought that part out as much yet. It's really cool to see how many data points have been collected. And I feel like this is a very streamlined and pragmatic application. There's a lot of different citizen science efforts people have made. And I think many of them peter out because they try to do too much up front and then they run out of steam because so many of these things are not tied to people's day jobs and it's hard to you know, keep up the motivation. So I think it's really smart to both open source this and make a template so people can customize it themselves. It was really cool to see your process. Thank you, Cameron. And that feedback is really on point. I think I personally have this tendency to over feature and Marco has to hold me back from that sometime. Very good point there. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you guys yeah. all. Yeah, oh, I would just want one more point. I would just reinforce that with, I totally agree with what, I forget the other person's name, but Cameron, what you said about that. One of the things, yeah, it's, it's a big juggling act, but the way I see this kind of data useful as a way to correlate with other data like particularly the mass behavior, correlating that with actual like testing data would be really interesting just to see if that, if it, there is actually a correlation between the two, particularly I was just looking at wastewater testing data. That's often like a, a three week in advance of a surge or three weeks to a month in advance of a surge. And then using that to correlate with mask behavior, see if there's any interesting things that go on there. I just think these tools can have a real impact as far as health policy in for cities and safe dealing with the, particularly the, the, you know, the health emergency we're in at the moment. So totally, I would love to see different kinds of data sets layered on top of each other, or perhaps this specific kind of behavior on top of, yeah, something more, something related like testing or yeah. Keep yes. Yeah, the simpler, the better. That's the other thing I like about this. It's just very easy to get to and doesn't try to bite off too much. And because I see so many projects that go down, you know, the data rabbit hole and end up being far too complex for their own good. So I think this is a, a really nice platform. Definitely helps me. So. Well, that's great to hear. And also huge shout out to Cameron for, for getting a city map up. It's, it sounds like. Oh, it's passed. 
Yeah, good job. Great, great, okay. great documentation. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Well, I will now close the event. Please do reach out again through our emails or on the GitHub repo. Yes, thank you everyone for attending and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday.